Good evening, and a blessed Maundy Thursday. As we gather for our Holy Week observances tonight, we begin to celebrate again the wonderful new command that our Lord and Savior Jesus issues to his disciples, that we will be recognized in the world by the way we show love to one another. And just the same, at the institution of the Lord's Supper, we celebrate alongside our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that moment where he reappropriates and repurposes the Passover Supper so that we might join in the new covenant that he issues by the seal of his own body and his shed blood. As we make our way toward Easter celebration this weekend, the Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter sunrise service serve as what's called the Triduum, a three-part series proper that takes us all the way from the moment of the Last Supper to the Lord's crucifixion on Mount Calvary and, of course, the blessed findings of the empty tomb and our risen Lord and Savior on Easter morning. As we celebrate Maundy Thursday this evening, the service will ramp up into perhaps our highest act of worship, and that is our confession of sins. By way of confession and testimony of faith, we receive Christ's own absolution, and we also watch before us the altar stripped, representing those moments before Good Friday when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was left entirely alone. As we begin tonight's service, we open in song. We sing together hymn number 436, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Yeah. 
invite you to stand at this time as we go forward in worship, beginning yet again with our prayer of the day and celebrating our baptisms with the remembrance of the invocation, the triune name of God. May the Lord be with you. Thank you. And let us pray. O Lord Jesus, on the night you were betrayed, you prayed that the cup of suffering might pass from you. But you said in prayer to your Father, your will be done. You obeyed your Father's will for the sake of our salvation. On that same night, you offered to your disciples and to us your body and blood, given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Then you allowed yourself to be betrayed into the hands of your enemies. You were unfairly tried and condemned to death for the sake of our salvation. As we share your holy gift, your body and blood, in communion with you, with one another, and with all the saints, we proclaim your redeeming death until you return in glory. King of kings and Lord of lords, hear our prayer and receive our praise. Amen. And so now let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We celebrate our verse of praise, verses 1 and 3 of him, 434, Lamb of God, pure and holy. Please be seated as we celebrate God's word this evening. Our first reading comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning with verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, 
from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we hear this encouragement from the hand of St. Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As it is comfortable for you, I'll invite you to stand at this time as we celebrate this evening's gospel, the gospel lesson which forms the basis for the sermon this evening. Our Maundy Thursday gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives." Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and very troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. Going on a little farther, he fell on his face and he prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'll invite you to be seated as we join together in song, celebrating the reality that is ours as everlasting Easter already in the hymn, What is This Bread?
name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who comes to us this evening celebrating not only new commands, but a new covenant that will never be broken again, sealed by his own body and blood, celebrated as we come together to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus, poured out for you and for me. Amen. Now, there's an image here as part of the backdrop for this evening's sermon. You see mingled together on the table in the painting the wash basin perhaps used on the night there where our Lord and Savior Jesus stooped down to get his towel dirty as he celebrated the washing of his disciples' feet. And as he gave them new command, also turned to give new covenant, celebrated by the presence of the bread and wine that are our Lord's body and blood. So often it is when we celebrate Maundy Thursday, we might focus on one or the other. And a distant third apart from foot washing and apart from the Lord's Supper proper may very well be the directive that we see our Lord model when it comes to prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. This evening you heard all three of those scenes as part of our gospel account. I cannot recall the last time we had opportunity to review the significance of these three pieces fused together, but that's exactly what we will accomplish this evening. Now, if you have opportunity to share a little background in the study of salvation history, more proper, the Passover meal specifically, you may recall that there's a moment in that meal where a child who is present will stand and ask this question, why is this night different from all other nights? Now, in Jewish faith and in their traditions proper, in the Passover meal, it is still answered today by saying, this is the night of the Passover. This is the night when the Lord promised liberation from slavery. This is the night where our Lord reminds us that he sees us, that he seeks us, and that he saves us. With that is a little remembrance going back to the book of Exodus. At the ending of the ten plagues, paramount for the Lord's punishment against a hard-hearted Pharaoh, finally would come the passing over of the angel of death and the death of all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Except for those who heard the Lord's command and knew of his visitation and obeyed his order to break the neck of a lamb, to celebrate this meal that was eaten in haste and to spread the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and the lintel of the doorway so that as the meal has its namesake of Passover, the angel of death would literally pass over the homes who were covered in the blood of the lamb. Now, as we have opportunity to examine that account in salvation history, we might come to think already of a little Easter gospel because, of course, if you were the enemies of God, you would see these events as the ten plagues. If you were part of the faith family of God, if you were one of the chosen in the nation of the children of Israel, these things may not have been seen as the ten plagues, but rather maybe perhaps, if we're bold enough to say, the ten miracles. Because this is the moment where the Lord looked at the enemy of Egypt and looked at hard-hearted Pharaoh and said to Pharaoh, you've struck my firstborn son Israel, now it is your turn to be struck. And so with that, what a wonderful celebration where God keeps his promises even to the likes of Moses from Moses calling in Exodus chapter 3 that our Lord heard the cries of his children, that he remembered his promises and acted swiftly to deliver them, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt and to celebrate how they should learn to worship him when they get to his holy mountain. In Exodus chapter 20, we see finally that great crescendo and those prophecies fulfilled as the Lord does exactly that even as he parses out his Ten Commandments for Moses to bring before the face of the people. 
Now, as we celebrate that wonderful Passover reality, we come year after year celebrating that Passover meal, children of all generations echoing that question, why is this night different from any other? Now we come to this Passover meal, the Last Supper, in the presence of our Lord, our Savior, and our King Jesus, A child could very well have stood up during that Passover meal and said, Jesus, what makes this night different from any other? And so we hear our Lord's answer. No longer do we concern ourselves with the old covenant that was made, that was broken by the people of God through the likes of idolatry and rebellion. Jesus says, this night is now different from every other because I give my blood. I break my body and I give it to you. Hear the word of the new covenant that will not be able to be broken because it is sealed with my body and my blood. Do this as often as you eat of it and as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Celebrating the old covenant that was fulfilled in Christ and now made new as he becomes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, we too now are passed over by that penalty of death. Yes, even though the reality of death still exists, as our Lord and Savior would look to the likes of Good Friday and experience that for us, we celebrate how by his wounds we are healed, covered in the blood of the Lamb. That penalty of death is now satisfied. Our sins are atoned for, and the wrath of our Heavenly Father passes over us to forsake his only begotten Son, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What makes this night any different from any other? We see our Lord and Savior who would come not only by righteous pursuit, but by holy obedience to make his life an oblation, to very literally be poured out in body and blood and in his last breath so that you and I would know his full, free, and final sacrifice by giving of his own life on the cross dead and then buried we still look forward to that celebration of easter morning where that lamb is restored and just as we see that rejoicing image of our shepherd to see the crook in his hand not simply as as a mode of his role of rescue but now as a banner of conquering victory welcoming all of the lambs of his flock safely home as you celebrate the pouring out of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the pouring out of that cup that would not so soon pass over him as such was the will of the Father. Perhaps for you already now you're celebrating the joy and the glory of that new covenant. Going back to the image that we share this evening, when it comes to these scenes all mingled together in prayer, in praise, in service, and in the pouring out of Jesus' own life as an oblation, maybe for you today you get to see that wonderful symmetry of pouring out. Certainly with the likes of water as Jesus stoops down to wash his disciples' feet. Certainly in the cup and on the table, Jesus' own body and blood given and shed for all of those who will continue to remember him and the covenant that he shares. If you notice, even by that night of Passover, something that makes that evening so radically different even in our observance of the Lord's Supper is exactly this. Water poured out by the hand and will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bread and wine shared at table not simply as a memorial meal, but a wonderful gift of sacrifice to have just a foretaste of the feast that is to come. There's only one other day in Jesus' life where we have opportunity to see these things gathered, not simply as a wonderful miracle, say, observed at the wedding of Cana, but no, vaulted into the perspective of offering. It's tomorrow, on Good Friday, 
when we celebrate the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, certainly experiencing the gravity of that day, not simply good for our Lord, but good for us as we benefit from his blood that is a ransom for you and for me. It's there at the foot of the cross, even as Jesus breathes his last, that the centurions come along and they make sure that our Lord, in fact, is dead. And rather than break his legs at the foot of the cross, they reach up with the spear and from his body pours an oblation, an outpouring of blood and water not simply a symbol of the promise of the new covenant, but a down payment that's signed, sealed, and finally delivered so that you and I may celebrate not only in the Lord's death, but champion the victory of the life that we'll come to find as we celebrate his resurrection. To God be all glory forever and ever. Amen. It is at this time, and maybe perhaps as you are familiar now tuning in week by week to those services that are coming to you in your living rooms and around your dining room tables, celebration of all offerings that come together. It's been amazing in these last days to hear about the sharing of all good things in common. To those of you who are otherwise continuing to support the life and ministry that is ours as a faith family at St. Luke's, thank you for such support. If you are meant to give those same offerings of time and talent and skill in your neighborhoods and in your workplaces, how wonderful to obey the Lord's command and to celebrate a life of response in that new covenant as you continue to love and serve your neighbor. Whatever your offering looks like as you give from a cheerful heart, we now join together with those offerings represented in the very throne room of God as we celebrate our offerings and this evening's offertory. As you are able, I'll invite you to stand for prayer. We pray. O Lord Jesus, in your holy supper, in the gift of your body and blood, we have forgiveness and life. 
through your death and resurrection, you have set us free from our slavery to sin and death. Keep us strong in good faith and shield us from temptation as we follow you. Jesus, our Passover lamb, have mercy on us. O Lord Jesus, during this holy week, we follow in your footsteps as you take up your cross for the sake of our salvation. Lead us in true repentance and fill our hearts with the peace that only you can give, the peace that comes in knowing that our sins are forgiven, washed away in your blood. O Jesus, our Passover lamb, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, on this day you gave us a new command, to love one another as you loved us. Lead us to opportunities for service so that we might share with others the love, hope, and comfort we have through faith in your name. O Jesus, our Passover lamb, have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you would be near us and remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As a faith family, it is our want to come together on Maundy Thursday to break the fast of Lent that we inaugurate often on Ash Wednesday and to gather around the Lord's table to celebrate that wonderful feast that is his body and blood in Holy Communion. Of course, this evening we are not able to accomplish that. And so with that, we join together to remember at this time, when we gather around the Lord's table, we celebrate wonderful gifts, not only the absolution and forgiveness of our many sins, but the down payment and promise of life everlasting, and of course, that peace that passes all understanding. And so this evening, our worship comes to a wonderful crescendo as we join together in confession, testimony, and our Lord's own absolution. Beloved in the Lord, when we are to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens our faith by giving us his body to eat and his blood to drink in, with, and under the bread and the wine. Therefore, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves as St. Paul urges us to do, for this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sins and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so I ask you this evening and join in your confession, do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. I am a sinner. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? His wrath and displeasure, temporal death and eternal damnation. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Now who is Christ? The Son of God, true God and true man. What has Christ done for you that you should trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Did the Father also die for you? He did not. The Father is God only, as is the Holy Spirit. But the Son is both true God and true man. He died for me and shed his blood for me. And how do you know this? From the Holy Gospel, from the words instituting the sacrament, and by his body and blood given me as a pledge in the sacrament. Do you believe that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his death and the shedding of his blood as he taught us. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So why do you wish to go to the sacrament? 
that I may learn to believe that Christ, out of great love, died for my sin, and also learn from him to love God and my neighbor. What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, both the command and the promise of Christ the Lord. Second, his own pressing need, because of which the command, encouragement, and promise are given. As we confess a proper understanding of the sacrament and examine our own hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. And so we turn to our Father in heaven and confessing our sins implore him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, Confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Now may God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes, let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Forgiven and free, we join together in our hymn of response, selected verses from hymn 420, Christ the Life of All the Living.
celebrate the stripping of the altar, we remember, especially in this solemn service, the significance of such an event. After the Last Supper, less than 24 hours remained in the earthly life of our Lord. Events moved rapidly. Prayer in Gethsemane, betrayal by Judas, arrest, trial, painful beating, the trudge to Golgotha, and execution. All of this Jesus faced alone. 